Dear Lord Jesus, I pray you bless the Word of God today. And I pray that your people would benefit from your book. And Lord, I pray you give us grace and mercy to teach and preach what you want us to preach. Pray the Holy Spirit will teach everyone that's here today. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Amen. All right, I want you to take your Bible now. And I want you to turn to uh, the verse I'm going to uh, teach on, Sunday school. So take your Bible and turn to the book of Galatians. And turn to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. Now you should mark your Bible. Uh, Galatians chapter 4 now, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, that means Jerusalem's up there in heaven right now. Paul, when he writes that down, he's talking about Jerusalem that's up there. Not the Jerusalem on earth, but the one up in heaven. So when, when it comes for time for you to die, and we'll, if the Lord tarries, we'll all drop dead, or the trumpet will sound and we'll go to New Jerusalem immediately. Now, it's there. New Jerusalem is up in heaven waiting for you. There's something in New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is a city. There's something in it. If you know what's in that city, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I might, I might point to you. So don't raise your hand if you don't know what's there. Do you know what's in that city called New Jerusalem? New Jerusalem is up in heaven. It's a city. There's something in that city that, that's there. Do you know what it is? It's the mother of us all. Yes, the mother of us all. How many of you want to go to New Jerusalem? That's a heaven. That he, our, our mother is not Mary. Our mother is New Jerusalem. That's your spiritual mother. Is New Jerusalem. It's a city up in heaven. Take your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. Turn to John chapter 14. And somebody tell me what's in that city. John chapter 14. And somebody tell me what's in that city. What's in the city? Many mansions. Many mansions. Say, make it personal. Okay, one more time. What's in that city? Now you've got it. Now you've got it. You don't have a mansion here. It's going to fall apart. The doors are going to come off going to get a crack in the ceiling and the floor is going to rot. Say amen. amen. Everything falls apart down here. Everything. And the reason for that is God don't want you to sit your heart here. He wants you to sit your heart up in heaven, not here. Don't put your heart down here. Put your heart up in heaven. That's where God wants it to be. Now, uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. God's made a mansion for you up in the air and it has your name on it. So that's where you're going. You're going home to a mansion. It's called New Jerusalem. Now how many understand what I'm talking about? Say amen. amen. All right. Now, now, the mother of us all. Take your Bible and turn to, in the margin of your Bible, right there in Galatians chapter 4, verse 26, write down Revelation 21. Verse 1 and 2, write it in the margin of your Bible. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Now turn to the verse. Turn to the verse and read the verse. But write it down in Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Write down Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2. Now turn to the verse. Turn to the verse. Turn, it, turn and read the verse. Revelation 21... Verse 1 and 2. I saw a new heaven. So where's he at? He's over here. So write it down somewhere. He's over there, right there. There's a new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. That's where you're going to be. That new Jerusalem is made for everybody that's saved from the Day of Pentecost, right there, 
to the rapture right there, the day of Pentecost. That's when the church began. And the church is raptured out right here at the rapture, going up to the judgment seat of Christ. So everybody in this area, saved, saved, saved. Say, I'm saved, washed in the blood of Jesus. Then New Jerusalem is for you. Amen. New Jerusalem is for you. The new world is for the Jews. The new heavens for the Gentiles. Three groups in the entire Bible. Three groups. The Jews, the Gentiles, and the church. You're the church. If you're saved. A saved Jew is in the church. He's, no, he's a Jew. He's, a, he's still a Jew physically. He's still a Jew. But he's in the church. Amen. So he's not going to be here on the earth. He's not going to be here on the earth. He's going to be in New Jerusalem. He's going to be in New Jerusalem. Because he's a, he's a saved person. Amen. A black man, he's saved. So he's going to be in Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. A Catholic, if he's saved, going to be in New Jerusalem. Come on, folks. You know some Catholics are saved. Say amen. amen. Some Mormons are saved. Amen. They're going to be in New Jerusalem. Be in New Jerusalem. Now, how many of you follow that? Say amen. amen. Okay. New Jerusalem. Now let's finish it. A new heaven, new earth, and a new heaven, and the first earth was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw holy Jerusalem. Now underline it. Holy. You'll be sinless then. You'll be sinless when you die and go to heaven. That's, the, that's a great joy. How many of you still sin? Uh, well, yeah, we're all in that same boat, aren't we? <laughs> I don't enjoy it, I don't like it, and I wished I wasn't there. But I, I, I feel sorry for myself, and, and I repent in dust and ashes and say, Oh God, why am I so stupid? Amen. Say amen. Because you see things you shouldn't see, and you think things you shouldn't think, and you say amen, amen. real loud. Amen. One of those days, you're going to be sinless. Amen. That's why I want to go to heaven. No more saying, God, I'm sorry. No more saying, Lord, why did I do that? Say amen. amen. Now, holy Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem. The holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven. So it's up there. And then it comes down. Then it comes down like that and lands on the earth. So New Jerusalem is a city up there. Comes down from heaven, lands right on the earth. So underline it. Comes, comes down from God out of heaven. Now underline this next four words. Prepared as a bride. As a bride. So this is strange kind of thinking, but it's still true. When you got saved, God baptized you into the, the church. It's called the church, and it's called a body. It's Christ's body. So you got baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. And all men, all saved men, are the bride of Christ, part of the bride of Christ. Yeah. Now, that's kind of strange. I don't quite understand that. Yeah. It's a great mystery, called a great mystery in Ephesians chapter 5. A great mystery. Now, you ladies, you can understand that a little bit better, can't you? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, you can understand that better. You're a woman. Right? Can't you understand that better than I can? You can comprehend it closer. I can't, I can't imagine that I'm going to be part of a bride. That just, that's just contrary to my thinking. I don't grasp that. But I know it's true because God said so. If what I'm saying is the truth, say amen. amen. All right. Now, now, take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 21. Look at verse 9. Revelation 21, 9. This goes there. You should mark it in your Bible. Write it in Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6 should have Revelation 21, 9 there in the margin. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues talk with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, 
the lamb's wife. Now, how many know who the lamb is? If you know who the lamb is, raise your hand. The lamb is for the Lord Jesus Christ. Say amen. amen. The lamb's wife. Who's the lamb's wife? The church. The church. They, they, everybody say what Jim said. Me, Come on. Me. You're the lamb's wife. You're the lamb's wife. Now take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Pick up verse 2. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. What are you trying to get me to do? I'm trying to get you to fight against sin. I'm trying to get you to get, have more of a love for Jesus Christ. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Okay, that's what it's all about. It's about loving him. Now, I'm out loving myself. I love myself. I, that's, that's the whole problem. I love myself too much. Say amen. If you love him, you get your eyes off of yourself and get it on him. Christians have a problem when they look at themselves. When you stop looking at yourself and start looking at Jesus Christ, it'll solve a whole bunch of your problems. Now, do you got that? Quit looking at yourself. Look at him. All about him. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's about him. Say amen. amen. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 11, 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right. For I am jealous. He's, he's jealous. Paul's jealous. The Apostle Paul is jealous. I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Then it's all right to be jealousy if you're jealous about the right things. Jealousy is okay if you're it's the right kind. The wrong kind is no good. Say amen. amen. The right kind is. This is a godly jealousy. A godly jealousy. For I have... Now what's that next word right there? What does that mean? That means you're engaged to somebody. You're engaged to Jesus Christ right now. The marriage don't take place until over there. Here, you're, married, you're engaged to him. My engagement is to Jesus Christ. Sam was engaged to his wife-to-be. Yesterday, she's no, they're no longer engaged. They're married. Amen. Now, you all follow that? You're engaged right now. You're in engagement. Now, now, Christian, keep that in mind. One of these days you're going to be married to him. Do I completely understand that? No. Nope. But God says so. You go by what God says, not by your understanding, but by what he says. A spouse, a, a, a spouse to you, one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin of Christ. Now, right there in the margin of your Bible, write down Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Why do you need to go to these verses? Because you've you got to keep in mind what it's about. It's about Jesus Christ. It's all about him. And that's what you want to keep in. My motive, my duty. Now, sometimes I get sidetracked. <laughs> Say, sometimes I get sidetracked. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You get sidetracked and you say you forget what you're supposed to be doing. Now, Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Let's pick it up again. Romans 7 4. Wherefore are you there? Say amen. Are you reading your Bible? Do you have your pen? Are you marking it? Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. You were crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, and you're dead to the law. You're, you're, but you was buried with him, you was risen with him, and you're alive. But you was buried with him, and you were risen with him. Dead to the law by the body of Christ when he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. That you should be, what's the next word? Should be what? Married. Married. Underline the word married. 
So that's an engagement now. It's, then it's going to be actual take place. Married to another. Now underline the next three words. Even to him. Even to him. Even to Jesus Christ. Even to him. Who is raised from the dead. That we should bring forth fruit into righteousness. Now underline even to him, even to Jesus Christ, even to him, and underline the word married, so that thing is legitimate. Don't, don't take that for granted. Now, should, underline that word should. Some Christians don't bring much fruit, but they should. Yeah. See, it should, you should, so say, Lord, help me to bring forth fruit. Help me to bring forth fruit. Help me to bring forth fruit. Because I should bring forth fruit. Every one of you are a fruit tree. And you're supposed to bring forth fruit. And you can bring forth uh, uh, more fruit if you'll get closer to the Lord. Okay, now take your Bible and let's turn to Revelation chapter 21 and let's look at that again. Revelation 21, 1. Let's watch it again. Mark in your Bible. Now, I, somebody asked me, do, can we ask questions? Absolutely. You can ask any question you want. Well, I, that's, that's quite a, a statement. I'll take that back. <laughs> you can't ask any question you want. You can ask any question that has to do with what I'm trying to say. <laughs> not just any question, because I may not be able to even come close. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, you can ask a question. Be feel free. All you do is raise your hand, and I'll stop, and we'll go for it. Revelation 21, 1. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So the first heaven and the first earth were passed away is right there. Here's the white throne judgment right here. And here's the first earth that's passed away. It goes up in a ball of flame. It's all going to go up in a ball of flame. Question. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Where does it go? I mean, it's up there. It, it's, it's gone. He, he didn't tell us where it went. He just said there is no more sea. Okay. you got to take him at his word. There's no more sea. That sea is between the throne of God. Go, I'll give you an example. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. And... Uh, Revelation chapter 6 and look what it says in Revelation chapter 6 Reve Revelation chapter 6 no I take it back Revelation chapter 4 Revelation chapter 4 I'll get there in a minute but I want you to turn to it I got a Bible I never use so it's a little hard for me to get to it all right Revelation chapter 4 and pick up verse 6. In answer to your question, this will help a little bit. And before the throne, before the throne, that's this throne right here. Before the throne of God, that's the last judgment, that's the judgment seat of Christ right there. No, judgment seat of Christ is back here. That's the white throne judgment. That's the last judgment for all the unsaved people that had been in hell for six or 7,000 years or more. That's the last throne, the white throne judgment. Now watch it. And before the throne, there was a sea, that's the one you're talking about, the sea of glass likened to crystal. So the top of that thing is like it's glass. Underneath of it is, is water. And that water goes down to the universe. The universe is underneath of it. The universe is underneath it, and that water goes down like that. And Satan is in that body of water. He's a seven-headed dragon, is what he is. There's no guessing about that. That's what it is. And when he says there's no more sea, the Lord just does away with it. Okay. It's gone like that, just phew, gone. When God says something, it just happens immediately. It's just like, let there be light, Bam! Just like that. No more sea. Bam! 
And you're talking about a, a space that I do, can't even imagine how, how large it is. That's, that's it. Okay, back to Revelation chapter 21. Any question will go. Revelation 21. Uh, and, and I saw a holy city, New Jerusalem, come down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride before her husband. And heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall uh, be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now look at that. Mark it in your Bible. Wipe away all tears from their eyes. How many have ever cried about something? I mean, really sure enough cried. Now, if you ladies raise your hand, because I know you have. Say amen. It's just part of being a woman. That's part of being... It, well, come on. Say amen. amen. <laughs> I, I, me too. I, I, I've cried. I, I have, I've cried, and but it, it's... It, I, it has to be something that touches my heart. Really, it's not... And sometimes my feelings. Sometimes it's my feelings. Sometimes I, I feel to the place where I just can't even control myself. And then I just start bawling about something. No more what? Right. No more what? Tears. Tears. And there shall be no more death. How many have experienced death? I mean close. I got, my brother Kenneth is gone, my brother uh, Gary's gone, and my brother Glenn's gone. Gary died of cancer, Kenneth died of cancer, Glenn shot himself with the uh, pistol through the mouth, shot his head off. My sister Barry died of cancer, my mother died of cancer, and my daddy died of cancer. They're all dead, I'm the only one alive. No more death! No more death. That's what you want. That's what everybody wants. No more death. I don't care who you are, that's what you want. No more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more what? Pain. Pain. My wife's been in pain since she was a little girl. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many have a back pain? Anybody got a back pain? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> how about a stomach pain? <laughs> how about a heart pain? How about a head pain? <laughs> no more pain. No more pain. The former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things what? New. Brand new. Boy, what a time that will be. All things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Now take your Bible and switch down there to verse 9. First uh, Revelation chapter 21. Pick up verse 9. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your home. I'm talking about your home. That's what I'm talking about. I'm homesick. I'm homesick. Somebody used to sing that, that song, Wait a little longer, dear Jesus. No, no, no. I hope it comes back today. I, I'm ready for him to come back right now. Amen. Verse 9, Revelation 21, 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Who is the bride? Who is the bride? Us. One more time. Who's the bride? Us. I'm part of the bride. That's Christians. Say people. Say people from, from the day of Pentecost to the rapture. And that's all say people in that period of time. Thousands of them. Thousands. Maybe millions. All right. Show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away into the spirit in the great and high mountain and showed me that great city, holy 
Jerusalem descending from heaven from God and having the glory of God and her light was likened to the stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and had a wall great and high underline it in verse 12 had a wall circle the word wall now somebody asked me why is a wall around New Jerusalem why is a wall around that city why did it put that thing I got the measurements of the wall do you remember what the measurements were dear well I got them somewhere uh, somebody that can figure out that kind of calculus. Mike, I bet you could. I bet you could figure it out. <laughs> How high is that wall? Do you know what that wall is for? Write it down in the margin of your Bible. To keep some folks out. To keep some folks out. You why? God don't want everybody in that city. That's for a special group, you people. You say God's presence. Yeah, he keeps them out. You say, what's on the outside of that wall? We're talking about a dog, you and I. We didn't call him a dog, but that's what he is. He's a false prophet. He's a false prophet. He's on the outside of the wall. You say, some preachers are, you got to watch out for preachers. They lie to you. I'm a preacher, I know. <laughs> they lie to you. You check them out. You go home and you say, Lord, show me that from the Bible, what he said. And see if he's correct or not. If what I say doesn't match the Bible, you dump me. Because it's supposed to match the Bible. And you can check me out. Every day of the week, check me out and say, does the Bible say that? Preacher said that, but that preachers say the wildest stuff. You can't imagine what they say. You got a good preacher; he'll tell you the truth. But boy, there's a whole bunch of those guys out there who don't have a clue what they're talking about. Right. Now, here we go. That's what the wall is about. Now I've lost my place. Where? What verse am I in with that wall? Uh, verse 12. Verse twelve. 2112 and had a great wall high and had 12 gates now those gates are for the people that are on this earth write it down the gates are for the people that are on this earth they go in through a certain gate these are the Jews down here and the 12 tribes are on the earth the 12 tribes so each gate has a name of the tribe that's there and the man the Jewish nation here go in through that gate go in through the gate to get healing and to get of the tree of life they go in through the gate get it and go back out the gate that's not their home their home is on earth and those are the Jewish nation the Jewish tells tribes the Gentiles they're way out here in the new heavens wherever that is that's out there somewhere but that's the Gentiles uh, here we go now verse 12 and the name of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel verse 13 on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates on the west three gates this thing is square three gates here three gates here three gates here three gates here I'm reading about your home that you're going to spend eternity in Eternity, a long, long time. A long, long time. So there's three gates. Now, what tribe is on what gate? That's my question. You have to find it out. That's homework. I do not know. <laughs> but I assume, how many of you read over there in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel when they made the tabernacle over there in the Old Testament, the, the 12 tribes were around the tabernacle. Three on this side, three on this side, three on this side, three on this side. You remember that? Okay, that's, I'm guessing, now I'm guessing, not supposed to guess, but I'm guessing that that might be the same as these right here. 
these right here might be the same as those. So if you went there and found out what tribe is on the west side, what tribe is on the east side, and what side is on the north side, and then you could figure out the gates from that passage of scripture. Probably. Now I'm guessing. I'm guessing. But it'd be a good thing to know the names that's on those gates. When you're going to be there a long, 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 long time. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Verse 14. And the royal city had 12 foundations. And then, and then the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So whose name's not going to be there? Judas. Judas. His name's not going to be there. Who is going to take his place? Yeah. There you go. You got it. You got it. So when they voted him in, they voted him in, he got his name on the 12 gates of New Jerusalem. Yeah. Ain't that something? <laughs> he got put in by 12 guys saying, we like, we like you. <laughs> we voted for you. You got it. And uh, bam, his name's on the, on, the, on the pearly gates of Jerusalem. That's something, boy. Just like that. Got put in. And it'll be there for eternity. No end. And the twelve gates. Verse 14. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So that underneath that wall there's a foundation. And he that talked with me had a great reed to measure the city. And the gates thereof. And the wall thereof. And the city layeth four square. It's square like that. And the length is as large as the breadth, and he measured the city with the reed. Twelve thousand furlongs. What's a furlong, Mike? You don't know. Uh, anybody know what a furlong is? What is it? Eighth of a mile. Twelve thousand into an eighth? I, fa I failed math and English and, and arithmetic and I, I failed the whole thing. 1,500? 1,500? So 1,500 this way, 1,500 this way, 1,500 this way, and 1,500 this way. Man, that's a big city. That would be something. Write it down. What did you say it was? 1,500. Fair amount. I know, put 1500, that's pretty good. I'll buy his, his thinking. Because it beats mine. <laughs> it beats mine. My, I can't figure it out. Say amen. But, but it's a big city. And it comes down from heaven out of God. It's 1500 this way, and 1500 this way, and 1500 that way, and 1500. How many square feet is that? <laughs> There's a lot of mansions up there. There's a lot of mansions up there. All right. And the reed, 12,000 furlongs, and the length and the breadth and the height are equal. He measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits. How much is a cubit? Yeah, uh, a cubit is from here to here. That's a cubit. Now, my wife's arms are shorter than mine, so we're not going to go by hers. Two hundred and sixteen feet high. That's a huge wall. You'd have a fit getting over that wall. You say, what's it for? God's prejudice. God does not let any Old Testament saints dwell in that city constantly. No church, no uh, tribulation saint gets there. He can go there, but he has to leave. A millennial saint can go there, but he has to leave. You and I don't have to leave. Amen. We could stay there. That's a blessing, man. I'm talking, he's telling us about home. Amen. And the building of the wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold. Boy, how many have a gold ring on? Oh, I don't have mine. <laughs> how many have a gold ring on? Raise your hand. My wife's got her gold ring. Gold ring, gold ring, gold ring, gold ring, gold ring. That's all the gold you're going to get. <laughs> no, he might make a billionaire out of it, and you can have a lot of gold down here. But up there, you, you walk on it. Up there, the whole city's made out of gold. 
transparent gold. Now what is that? You study gold in the Bible and it has it connected with God. Gold in the Bible. You know people down here love gold? That's, that's what they love down here. They love gold. My brother had a five gallon bucket of gold <laughs> hid under his bed. <laughs> Ooh, I figured it up one time. I said, tell me how much a five gallon bucket of gold would be worth. He said, it's worth about eight million dollars. Well, I didn't get any of it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I wanted some, but I didn't get it. <laughs> Say, come, that's life. God give me something more important than gold anyway. Amen. If I had $8 million, all I'd do is spend it. <laughs> and I would spend it. <laughs> all right, verse 19. And the foundation of the wall of the city was garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second sapphire, boy, that was a beautiful, beautiful city. Man, when the sun shines on that city, it'll just about blind you. Because there's no need of the sun inside the city. And inside the city, there's no need of the sun. Because the, the sun, Jesus Christ, is going to shine in the city. So there's no, there's no day nor night, there's no night inside the city of Jerusalem. It's daytime all the time. You know why it's daytime all the time? You don't have to sleep. That's why it's daytime all the time. You don't have to sleep. Thank God, I, I, right now i got to go to sleep. Say amen. There, I don't have to go to sleep. It'll be light all the time. I'm going to serve God in New Jerusalem. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve God. Serve him now because you want to be called a servant. Serve him now. And you say, what's serving him? Doing what God wants you to do. Second, sapphire. The third is kulsalo. Uh, the fourth, an emerald. The fifth, a sardox. The sixth, a sardis. The seventh, a chrysolite. The eighth, a barley. And the ninth, a topaz. And the tenth, a chrysolite. The eleventh, and jasperth. And, and the uh, tenth, a amethyst. And the twelfth, a agate. The twelfth, a and uh, twelve pearls are several gates uh, of one pearl. So here, here's these gates right there. And that gate is a pearl that is bigger than a man could walk through. So the pearl's hinged. It's hinged like this. So the pearl comes around like that. And then comes around like that and closes. But they never close. The gates never close. The gates are open all the time like that. But it's a pearl. It's a pearly gate. How many have ever heard of the pearly gates of heaven? It's a, man, that's a big pearl. That's a big pearl. I'd like to see the oyster. <laughs> but made the pearl. No, I think the Lord just says, pearl, 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 and it's a pearl. He didn't even use the oyster. <laughs> Say amen. That's the way God does things. And the streets of the city, I'm in 21, the streets of the city are pure gold. Well, I'm going to walk on gold, on the golden streets of heaven. I ain't that something? I want to go to heaven. I want to go on God's time. Yeah. Yes, I do. I want to go on his time. As it were, transparent glass, and I saw no temple there. And so on. I'm going to let you read the rest of it. I'm going to let you read the rest of it, and I want you to mark this. And if there's somebody you know that you love... And they die. I want you to go to this passage of scripture. And I want you to go over it and say, that's where they're at. That's where they're at. That's where they're at. That's where they're at. Because if the Lord tarries, people that you love are going to die. And when they do, when they do, I want you to take this passage of scripture. And I want you to write it down and say, that's where they're at. They're in New Jerusalem, waiting for you. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your precious book, and I thank you that there's someone I'm going to see eye to eye. And one of these days, I want to see Jesus, but one of these days, I'm going to see my mother. And I'm going to go up and say, Mother, I'm so glad that you got saved. And I'm going to see, I hope, my daddy, I hope, 
and my brothers, I hope, maybe not, but I hope so. But there's someone that you love that has already gone to heaven. Now, Christian, don't forget where they are and that they're waiting on you and you'll be there on time. In Jesus' name I pray and for his sake, amen.